food wise, I don't know where we, oh yeah, I do. It's, it's called multimedia and corporations who said you're too busy to cook here. Let me put in a plastic bag and put in the microwave for you. This is the Dr. Haley Show podcast, and today we're going to spend some time with Amy Wilson, a board-certified geriatric pharmacist. She's also a, a fitness coach and a, a nutritionist. She's on a mission to help people heal and decrease their dependence on medication and live their lives with energy and purpose. Amy, thank you so much for joining us today. Where in the world are you right now? I am in Louisville, Kentucky, and thank you so much, Dr. Haley, for having me here today. Ah, it's my pleasure. Actually, I'm kind of excited to spend this time with you because I, I've been taking in some of your content on YouTube. You've got an amazing YouTube channel. I encourage everyone to head over there and check out Amy K. Wilson on YouTube. Great, great content. Very consistent. It keeps on coming out, and it's absolutely perfect. Love it. I love it. I appreciate that. I am a couple weeks behind. <laughs> And, but I do try to do consistency and I like doing short little, most of them are pretty short because I, I realize people have time and they just want like, get to the point, give me the information and let me go. And you're even bigger on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. I have a pretty good following on Instagram. I'm all about the tips, all about helping. And so once again, if you want that bite-sized content, follow me. I'm the nutrition coach pharmacist on Instagram. That's great. I got a question for you. Did yeah. you drink coffee today? I absolutely did drink coffee today. I love coffee. But tell me about your coffee. What's what would you put in it? Nothing. My coffee is black. So I do I do black coffee. Now every once in a while I will have a espresso and I'll put I just do nut pods. So I'll foam up some nut pods, which is a non-dairy um it's almond milk and coconut milk creamer. Okay. And it has no sweetener in it and it just gives that kind of little I like foam. I'm foo-foo. I love the foam. Yeah, I, <laughs> so, I, I, it's good. I, I feel it. I, I get it. I have a little maker that kind of bubbles it up for me. Mm -hmm. I like to put my coconut milk, the coconut cream, the kind you get in a can for cooking. Yeah, yeah. And lately, I don't know what you think about this. Lately, I've been having a spoonful of coconut oil with it just to add a little satisfaction. I don't know if that's a good mm, thing or not. You're doing the bulletproof kind of coffee. Well, I'm trying it. I'm experimenting yeah. for just a few days so far. I don't know. What's your take on that? We're all different. And I did Bulletproof a couple times and I just prefer my coffee black. And is it better than loading it up with a bunch of sugar and just crap? Absolutely. And that's going to help you with stabilizing your blood sugar a little bit too. So it's, it's a win. So why not? All right. Amy K. Wilson from Derbyville, Kentucky approved. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Besides coffee, what else did you have today? I'm just curious about how you eat. So I do intermittent fasting and I break my fast around 10 ish. And I had avocado toast. My favorite bread is something called Simple Needs, and I have to order it. It's a gluten free, nutritious bread because a lot of gluten free stuff out there, people are like, oh my gosh, gluten free does not mean healthy. I'm going to tell you right now, just because they're gluten-free Oreos does not mean it's healthier Oreos. And it's a very nutritious seeded bread. Absolutely love it. So I have that with a egg because yes, you can eat eggs and some fruit. What's interesting, my wife and I have been playing with our own recipes when it comes to making gluten-free bread. We're not gluten-free, but we don't consume a lot of gluten because it is inflammatory. Mm-hmm. But I realized when you take an egg, it doesn't matter what you mix with it. It could be ground flax seed. You can put literally anything. You can mix up anything and turn it into a, a liquid or a dough and put it in a bread pan and out comes bread. It's crazy. It's cookies or bread-like stuff, all gluten-free. It's crazy. So how's the consistency, though? Because sometimes it's well, like a, a hard rock. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it could be some. We've, we've made a few bricks, but but we've also made very bread-like out of just, let's just make it up and, and yeah. we can pour it on a pan and make pancakes. And it's filled with healthy stuff like bananas or coconut oil or whatever it is. It just mm -hmm. comes out delicious and healthy. Now, the funny thing is, is when I say that, 
I don't know too much about you and your perspective on diet. I'm getting a little bit here and there, and I've seen some in the videos, and I've seen a blog post about eggs. So I know enough about you to know that you're not a vegan. Mm -hmm. um, Correct. I, some people think I'm a vegan, and if you are what you eat, I eat vegan, so I might be. That's a little bit of a joke, but <laughs> cows are vegans. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like to joke. It's like I, I once made the most delicious imitation vegan burger out of 100% grass-fed beef. But a lot of my audience has been fighting or once fought cancer. So they're having very cleansing, mm -hmm. detoxing diets where they're just taking in vegetables and herbs and most everything is raw and they're juicing and they're avoiding animal foods completely, which I think is okay for a season. Mm -hmm. There's different reasons for different diets, but when it comes to someone trying to achieve their optimal health and physical well-being, and they don't have disease and they're not fighting cancer, what would you say the best diet is? Well, this is this is hard to say because we are all different DNA wise. And that's where I get where someone says, well, this worked for my neighbor and this didn't work for me. And first of all, diets, I hate to say diets, period. How about what's the best nutrition? The best nutrition is something that you can sustain and that works. And that means you do need protein, whether you're getting it from an animal source or a plant source, you do need fat, you do need carbohydrates. The problem that we get into is the all or none and thinking that, we don't have balance. And the other problem that we get into, especially with carbohydrates, is that I can't tell you how many clients, I have clients all over the world and I have clients all over the United States because I do virtual. And always the first week is like, fruits and vegetables are carbohydrates? Yes, fruits and vegetables. Because we think about carbohydrates being the cakes, the candy, the pasta. We All we think about is simple carbohydrates. We forget that fruits and vegetables and grains are also carbohydrates. And those are the ones that we need to be thinking about. And so everybody's a little bit different. I know for me, I've tried to do vegan. It doesn't work. I need animal protein to feel better. I have vegan clients who they have animal protein and they don't feel well. And then I also have clients who have something that's called alpha gal syndrome. And if you haven't heard what that is, that is actually, you get it from a tick bite and it causes you to not be able to eat animal products or have any kind of animal products. Mm. It's very scary and it's on the rise. So as like one of my clients who has it, she goes, I would just kill for a burger right now because <laughs> she just can't have it. But our bodies are different in what they absorb and what they use. And so it's never wrong to go with whole food nutrition. I'm going to say that right there. So if you are a vegan and you're getting all your protein from impossible burgers and anything that's processed, that's still processed crap, whether you're vegan or not. So we want to get, whether you're vegan or somebody who eats animals or whatever it is, you want to get whole food nutrition, get rid of the process. I should say ultra process. Some process is okay. It's the ultra process that we really need to start focusing on. Pretty much 90% getting it out of our diet, our nutrition. Yeah, I like the way you said that too. Some processing is okay. If you take your fruits and vegetables and you put them in a blender to turn them into a smoothie, you're processing it. Yeah. And yeah, if so I'm getting frozen broccoli and it's, it's frozen broccoli, it's picked at the height of season, that's okay. And that does cause some processing. That's fine. What we're talking about is any chemicals, added sugar, added flavors, added colors. You know, honestly, let's just think about it. It's the bag of Doritos <laughs> that has, you're like, what is this? Yeah. Yeah. The, the beverages that are chemical soups, so many things in there. Uh, it's interesting too, because when we talk about medications, and I know you know a lot about this as a geriatric pharmacist, mm -hmm. but which is kind of... Um, Odd because you're helping people with food yeah, rather than medications. So I am a full-time practicing geriatric pharmacist. I work in nursing homes. I am also a full-time nutrition coach and fitness coach. My goal is to keep you out of my nursing homes. That is the end all be all goal because that's not living. And what we are seeing now is 
especially now, is a lot of the admissions coming in are lifestyle diseases. So we're seeing diabetes, type 2, prediabetes, strokes, heart attacks, metabolic syndrome. That's what we're seeing coming in. And the other issue that we're seeing is that they're younger. They're 50s, 40s. Oh. It's not your normal, what you think about end stage life. Okay. You're 80, you're 90. You're not able to take care of yourself. That's what we think nursing homes are. That's not the case anymore. People are living their younger years in a nursing home and who wants to go out that way? I don't think any of us do. So I always say I'm a pharmacist who I understand there's purposes for medication, but if I can get you off the medication through fitness and nutrition, if I can decrease the amount of medication that you have to be on through fitness and nutrition, it's a win-win. Yeah. And as long as we're talking about that, what does a plan to get off medication look like? Do I just stop taking my high blood pressure and my, do I stop taking stuff to control my blood sugar? Or how does that work when, when you're working with your doctor? Are they willing to, are doctors willing to say, okay, you're right. Maybe we can decrease the medication. It's funny that you ask. I've actually just signed on two practitioners. One is a nurse practitioner group and another one is a doctor's group to refer clients to me so that I can work in conjunction with them with people who are wanting to get healthier, get stronger, and possibly reduce their burden of medication. Can you go off your medication? It's like, but I don't have high blood pressure today. I'm going off my medication. Lisinopril, I don't need it. No. Can you go off your diabetes medication right away? No. But here's what you can do. It's never too late to start. It's never too late to start working on your nutrition, getting help, getting a coach who's going to work with your doctor. It's never too late to start moving your body. What happens is we start healing from the inside out. When we start eating real food and getting rid of some of the crap and the junk, we start decreasing inflammation. Well, inflammation is the cornerstone of so many diseases, especially heart disease, especially diabetes. When we start doing that with conjunction of your doctor, because remember, I'm a pharmacist, I don't prescribe. So with, with the doctor's blessing and working with the doctor, they're going to start monitoring you. You're also going to monitor yourself. And maybe, just maybe, we can start decreasing your medication. And the ultimate goal would be, yes, could we get you off that medication? Absolutely. Sometimes it's just being on the lowest effective dose that you don't have to be on these high doses anymore. But yeah, it's absolutely possible to reverse and to get off or at least get on the lowest effective dose. But you have to do that slowly and you have to do that with your doctor's approval and actually, I won't say approval, but with your doctor on board of being there to monitor and make sure that they're there to decrease the medication as you need it. Yeah, I'm going to suggest in some cases you're going to have to decrease the medicine if your high blood sugar and your high blood pressure are caused by excess weight and you mm -hmm. shed 50 pounds. And those sugar levels and blood pressure naturally come down and you're still taking the same medications, the same doses to further lower your sugar and further lower your blood pressure, you can actually get into trouble. Yeah. Not get enough blood flow to your brain, start getting uh, any, dementia symptoms. Any of my blood pressure clients, any of my diabetes, pre-diabetes, type 2 diabetes clients, I am having them monitor every single day, blood pressure every single morning, doing their blood glucose. Because here's the reason is what happens is, is that let's say you just go on your own. You're like, oh, I'm going to do this. And then you wake up and you're like, oh, I'm exhausted. I have no energy. And you stand up and you get tunnel vision, which is called orthostatic hypertension, or maybe you're constantly nauseous or dizzy. Well, guess what? Those are signs that your medication is working too well, because now you've naturally decreased your blood sugar, naturally decreased your blood pressure, and your medication is doing what it's supposed to be doing, but it's actually taking lower than what you need. And that's why it's so important to be working with somebody and to be diligent about being your own healthcare advocate and taking notes and writing down those numbers so that you can also see the correlation between eating well and what happens. Because it's, yeah. it's one of those kind of crazy things like, wait a minute, I start eating well, I start losing inflammation, my blood pressure goes down, my blood sugar starting to be 
be stable. This is crazy. Why is this happening? Because you're giving your body actually what it needs to do its work. It doesn't have to work harder anymore because that's right. what we've been doing by feeding it junk food is making our bodies work 10 times harder than they really should. As you're saying that, it's remind me of a book I read probably in the 70s by Drew Pearson and and Andrew Andrew Shaw. I forget the names, the authors, but it was Life Extensions. And I think that they're behind the Life Extensions movement today, their original work. Now, I think they went about it wrong at the time. They would take buckets of vitamins and yeah. <laughs> think they're going to live forever. And that could get you into problems too, as opposed to taking a whole food, nutrient-dense food approach. But the concept was that if I can be healthier tomorrow, I'm kind of making myself younger and in mm -hmm. a sense, extending my life. Mm -hmm. And everything you're talking about is doing that. It's okay, how can I be better tomorrow so that I don't need so much medicine and I'm getting closer to my ideal weight, changing my body density. I like it. Yeah. So I was, especially for females, not so much my male clients, but my females always say, you got to quit chasing skinny because that's their end all be all is they want this certain physique. They want to be back in their 16 years when they had no hips and skinny. I'm like, that's gone. Been there, done that. That's, that's not what we're working for anymore. Will you lose inches? Yeah. I don't care about weight per se, because especially for females, every time that you went and lost weight, you lost muscle mass. That's not what we want. In our midlife, upper years, we need muscle. We need to add muscle. So what I want people to start thinking about is longevity. Start think thinking about strength, not the skinny, because honestly, skinny is not healthy. Skinny is not equal to health, although we think it is, and we especially think it is now today with all the diet medication out there. Skinny does not mean healthy. Skinny can mean frail. Skinny can mean that there's something else going on, but strength will help you get out of a chair. Strength is going to help you lift your luggage in your plane. Strength is going to help you with your grandkids, your dogs, being able to do the garden, be able to move. And that's what you guys start thinking about is health, strength, and losing inflammation. Those three and you're golden. Yeah, I like to think about it as a survival of the fittest. If I mm. didn't have all the luxuries of technology and couldn't go to the grocery store to buy my food, how would I get my food? Am mm -hmm. I capable of doing that? <laughs> yeah. You know, uh, and for other people, it's are you capable of getting dressed? Mm -hmm. it, there's strength, but there's also flexibility and there's endurance and cardiovascular health. And where are we and how do we make that better tomorrow? So, you know, it's funny as we're talking about this, because I'm kind of convicted too. Have you ever seen the movie, The Incredibles? Yeah, <laughs> I have, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Incredible, I feel like Mr. Incredible right now, but not in his glory days. There was, <laughs> there was, and the, it's hysterical in the, in the movie, because when you see it, it's like, wow, that's kind of what's happening to me. There was a time when they decided no more superhero work, because there's, people are afraid of superheroes now. So Mr. Incredible gets this day job where he's working at an insurance mm -hmm. company and sitting at a desk and he's getting kind of fat and his whole body composition is changing, going the other way. Instead of being V-shaped, he's the opposite. He's bigger <laughs> below and smaller on top. And then, of course, I don't expect this to happen in my life where all of a sudden, hey, we need Dr. Haley's super strength again and save the world. So I probably won't have a reason to bounce back quite as strong as he did. But I'm at that point in my life saying, man, you got lazy and it's time to start making changes and change that. You're going the wrong way when it comes to body density. And I know that a yeah. lot of the audience can relate to that. And they'd be saying, that's me. I'm not as strong and I, I don't have that shape that I used to. Have. The things that used to be high are now getting low. And instead of big shoulders, I have a bigger waist. So what I would say is take a deep breath because we beat ourselves up so much. And especially, and I know with women, we have these mean girls that live in our heads. I always tell people to evict them, put the rent side out, say, see you later. What you have to decide is that what, this is not the way I want to be. And this is not what I want going forward. And what can you do about that? 
the problem is that we think that we have to go to the gym and work out three to four hours every day. And then all I have to do is eat lettuce and chicken breasts. And that is just so depressing. And you're just like, oh, I can't do that. This is just horrible. But I'm going to tell you that's the wrong answer. I'm going to say you can absolutely move your body 30 minutes, a good workout that includes strength training to build that muscle. And then the rest of your movement is what's called NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis, which absolutely just means move your body, get off your butt, get off the chair, go do some laundry, go for a nice walk, get your garden ready, maybe mow the lawn. It's getting nice here. So all those kind of things, go walk your dog. That's the kind of activity that you can do per day. So 30 minutes, good workout, get that muscle building the rest of the day to stay active. Food wise, I don't know where we, oh yeah, I do. It's, it's called multimedia and corporations who said you're too busy to cook here. Let me put in a plastic bag and put in the microwave for you. We are not too busy. We don't have to cook seven course meals. We can keep it simple and it can be delicious and taste good and be what our bodies need and not just a chicken breast with some lettuce. Sure, if you want chicken breast, great. There's 20 different ways you can make a good chicken breast, but you're not just shackled to the idea of dieting. Nutrition is fruits, vegetables, grains, proteins, spices. So many things taste amazing when you really start working on real food and get rid of that chemical taste and you'll be like, wow, this is just so good. It's hard at first because it's kind of like learning something new, learning a different language. But then once you get into the groove, you're like, oh, okay. And what? I eat the same breakfast every single day. Is that okay? Hey, I'm busy. And it's my favorite breakfast. So I'm like, what? Avocado it gives toast. Me avocado toast. It gives me everything wrong. that I want. It has fiber. I get protein. It's like I get all of my macronutrients with that breakfast. And then dinner is some kind of whole food nutrition, same with the afternoon. Now, does that mean you're not going to have a cookie now and then? Oh, please. This girl loves her chocolate chip cookies. You're not going to take those away from me. But it's not a daily occurrence. And then life happens. So you're going to go to a party. You're going to go to here. And you just learn how to manipulate those situations and make the better choices. And then maybe it's like, what? hey, it's a party. I'm just going to have fun. The whole thing is, is that after the party, you're back to your lifestyle again. You don't let that party become the next day, the next day, the next day. It's like you, it's a one and done, and then you're back to your lifestyle. We make things so much harder than they really have to be. Right. Yeah, I, I agree. And if you're doing it right 95% of the time, you, you can get away with the 5% of a maybe not strictly organic. Uh, yeah. I, I'm still going to avoid some of the crazy processed, ridiculous stuff. You're not going <laughs> to catch me eating Skittles, but <laughs> <laughs> so I heard you talk about counting macros. Yeah. What's that all about? So macronutrients are your big, I'll say your blocks of food. So your macronutrients are pretty much just protein, fats, and carbohydrates. Those are what's considered macros or aka macronutrients. Your micronutrients are your vitamins and minerals. So I coach tracking macros. And the reason being is that most of us come from dieting industry, dieting world, and all we did was count calories. Well, I'm going to tell you, I knew 1200 calories like the back of my hand. I knew an apple was 80. I knew this 100 calorie snack pack was 100 calories. The problem with just counting calories is you're not looking at the types of food that you're ingesting. I could do all 1200 calories and be nothing but carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. I could do all 1200 calories and it'd be all fat. It's very rare that most people get, unless they're on a carnivore diet, that you're, you're getting all your protein, all your nutrition from protein. So when you're looking at actually how much carbohydrates you need, how much fat you need, and how much protein you need, and start looking at it that way, instead of just counting calories, you start feeling better. You start giving your body what it needs. Your body does need protein in order to keep its muscle and build muscle. Your body does need fat for hormones. Your body does need carbohydrates for your brain, for your thyroid, 
We need all three of those macronutrients, not just one of them. And that's the problem with a lot of, there's a lot of diets out there. And I always say it, diets have a start and end date. And it's, if it's something that you can't keep going and keep doing, then then it's not ever going to work. So you need all three because your body needs all three. And that's the difference between macro tracking and doing calorie counting. You know, it's funny because I thought about that in, from a perspective of, well, if I limit one of those categories, I'll probably burn things faster, but it would be kind of like if I took my automobile and I said, okay, I'm going to tune it so that it burns more oil. Mm -hmm. That doesn't make it last longer and work better. I could do, I could tune it like that and make more smoke come out of the exhaust pipe. You know, I could, I could make some changes to where it runs real rough and burns more oil. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's kind of what we're doing when we do an elimination diet to where we're eliminating one of the macro nutrients. So I agree with you. And it's funny because when you have all three of those, they actually work more efficiently, which is kind of weird. That kind of means that you can do more with less gas, so to speak. Yeah. It's like I can drive my car further without burning so much fuel. So I suspect that our issue is not that we're not burning enough calories. It's probably that for the most part, the calories we're burning aren't containing enough fuel. <laughs> exactly. And I always say we're overfed, undernourished in the United States because we eat so much junk food. We don't get the nourishment our, that we need. Our body is one big just chemical reaction, the enzyme processes, how we build muscle, how things get to our brain, the neurotransmitters, dopamine. For our body to work properly, we have to give it the right nutrition. Now, here's the thing though. Most people are like, oh, but I'll just give it this and it'll be fine. But you don't realize that you do need the nutrition. You do need the protein, the carbohydrates, the fat. Yes, our body is extremely smart. It will figure out how to survive. That's what it does. But it doesn't mean it likes it. It doesn't mean that it prefers that. So when you give it protein, fats, and carbohydrates, when you give it what it needs, guess what, ladies in menopause? Your heart flashes decrease. It's amazing. The Buddha, I call it the tummy. I called my when I was going through all this stuff. But your your little your little pot belly starts to go away. The brain fog goes away. The joint pain can start going away because you're also losing inflammation. So when we give our body what it really, really needs, our body works for us. And once again, we're looking at now we're looking at decreasing aging, which I think that's what a lot of us are looking for is the age backwards and feeling better and having more energy and more life and wanting to do all the things because now our body's like, hey, it's about freaking time you're giving me everything yeah. that I need and I can go do go do all the things I've always wanted to because I feel amazing. Yeah. Dr. Natasha Campbell McBride wrote a book called Gaps, Gut and Psychology Syndrome, and also one called Gut and Physiology Syndrome. One of the tools that she uses to help people figure out the foods they should be eating is a diet log. Three columns, mm -hmm. date and time stamp, what you ate, and then third column, how you feel. Mm -hmm. And the how you feel isn't just the things we would think about when it comes to digestion. Now, I have constipation or diarrhea, but also uh, how's your mental processing? What's your sleep like? What's your pain levels like? Are you inflamed? Does it hurt? Um, when I when you're in a conversation, are you taking everything in? Are you able to follow? Can you pay attention when you're in class mm -hmm. or whatever the case is? What how how is your body working? And then we start avoiding the things that make us not feel good. If we're agitated and moody, what'd you eat? Is there a pattern there? Every time you eat French fries, you get agitated an hour later. Maybe you should stop eating French fries or potatoes for that matter. Maybe not. Maybe you do really good on potatoes and then you should probably add those and keep that on your good list. Avocados. Okay, I eat avocados and I feel good, clear mind, and I don't crash. But yeah. when I eat whatever it is, bread, I crash an hour later. Okay, don't eat bread. Eat more avocados. So I, I kind of uh, like how... You think along those lines that not mm -hmm. everybody is supposed to be eating the same things, but we can figure out, do we do better on these kinds of foods? And if so, how much should I be consuming? 
Yeah. And what I tell is like, especially with my clients, we learned what's called carb cycling because that makes us metabolic flexible. So we'll have two days are, it's not keto, but it's lower carb. And the rest of the day, we bring the carbs back in. Some of my clients feel amazing on those low carb days. They're like, oh my gosh, it's the best. Some of my clients feel horrible on those low carb days. It is all mm -hmm. in our DNA. Some people do better with lower carbs. Some people do better with higher carbs. Some people like me who carry the type two diet BD's gene have to be somewhere moderate so that we're not spiking our blood sugar. So our bodies will tell us what it needs. You just have to listen. And that's what we'll go through when I'm talking to my clients about is, okay, now I want you to start listening to your body. How do you feel on these days? How do you feel the next day? Because I'll get someone's like, oh, I'm so tired today. You know, it's like, I don't know what it is. And it's usually always Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm like, how'd you do on the weekend? Oh, didn't eat. We were so busy, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, you don't understand that two days ago is a lot of what's causing how you feel today. Yeah. We're so in this, everything is quick. Everything is now. My client's like, oh, I just started. Do I have results tomorrow? No, it doesn't work that way. Your body, once again, is telling you what it needs. And if you're not listening and you're not feeding it, then you're not going to be able to get the results that you want. And it's going to catch up with you. So if not eating two days ago, all of a sudden you're not feeling good because you can't do your workout. Well, let's start looking at your patterns and what can we do to improve those patterns? Yeah. 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 I, I absolutely agree. Got a question about something that I've been noticing on TV a little bit. And you just reminded me when you talked about having a gene for diabetes, a predisposition mm -hmm. towards. Mm -hmm. I've noticed watching TV. In fact, I just said something to my wife yesterday when we were watching the news together. I said, look at the person on the news. Look how much weight she has lost. <laughs> and it seems like it happened in a very short time. And, and I feel like I'm seeing this a lot in Hollywood right now and the people of Hollywood. Mm -hmm. You know where I'm going with this. Oh, What's absolutely. happening? So more than likely, they are taking a GLP-1, glucagon like peptide 1, also known as Ozempic, also known as Wagovi, also known as Monjero. And here's the problem with this. Is it a great breakthrough in science? Absolutely. GLP-1 is a hormone that's found in the gut. When they found this hormone, they realized that it helped with appetite. They realized it helped with insulin. Two good, two great things. We have a, we have a diabetes epidemic. We do. It also has a side effect of losing 10 to 15% of your body weight. Okay. Well, big pharma really hasn't had a cash cow since Viagra. It's been a while. And anything that has to do with losing weight is always a moneymaker. The diet industry is $3 billion. We are so willing to shell out our money for the shiny object, for the hope, just to get in our skinny jeans. Here's what I want people to think about, because if you're on this medication, I'm not going to belittle you. I'm not going to say, oh my gosh, how could you do this? If you're thinking about it, I want you to think about what could happen. And if you're on it, I'm going to tell you what you need to do. So the problem with the medications is that it slows down your appetite. And before you're like going, yes, that's what I need. I want to slow down my appetite. Yes, I won't be hungry. Problem. Remember we talked about macronutrients. Your body needs carbohydrates, fat, and protein. Okay. When you're not eating... What happens? Oh, I lose weight. Okay, no, you lost muscle mass. That's why we see Ozempic face and Ozempic butt. It's not them losing fat out of their mm. face and their butt. It's losing the muscle mass. Okay, so that's one. Mm. Your body needs nutrition. It needs amino acids. It's going to get it from your muscle. That's why you're losing all that muscle. Now, your body also needs vitamins and minerals. Where's it going to get that from? Your bones. So now we're looking at osteopenia and osteoporosis. We also have a very severe side effect called gastroparesis. And gastroparesis is the total shutdown of your GI tract, meaning that once you eat, it sits there. It is not able to mm. move from your stomach to your intestines to outside your body. It's not reversible. 
So yeah, it can cause you to lose weight and lose weight quickly. I mean, we're seeing it all over Hollywood. We're seeing people who've lost weight. And then I've seen a, a starlet said, oh, but I'm pre-diabetes. So I knew I had to do something. Okay. All right. Well, you could have done it with something else too. Is it slower? Is, is doing nutrition and building muscle slower? Absolutely. But this is what I'm really afraid of. And I'm going to get on my soapbox here. In five years, if you are still on this medication, because what I'm seeing is also a psychological dependence on this medication, you've lost the weight. You don't want to go back on it because it does mess with hormones called ghrelin and leptin. You get hungry, you eat again, you slow down your metabolism because you don't have muscle mass. So you stay on this medication because you're scared to death to get off. So we have a psychological dependency. You're still using your muscle mass, so you are getting frail. You're still using your bones to get your vitamins and minerals. So now we got more osteoporosis and osteopenia. Where's this going? It's going to what I'm calling old lady syndrome because skinny, once again, does not equal healthy. Longevity is strength. Longevity is muscle. And yeah, you can be looking good and being skinny, but that's not going to help you at 35, 40 breaking a hip or your femur because your bo your bones are so brittle. It's a direct line into a nursing home. And I don't think people are gonna see that until we've seen these for several years. And so if you're on these, what can you do? You gotta make sure you're getting your nutrition. You have to make sure that you are getting protein. And I don't mean ensure. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> because that's what big pharma is looking at right now. They're like, they know there's an issue with protein wasting. They know there's an issue with muscle wasting. So they're looking at a medication to help that. And I'm like, okay, so now we've got polypharmacy going on. And so we have a medication that's going to help you lose weight. It also causes constipation and nausea. So there's two more medications. And now we're looking at a medication that can keep your bone mass. That's another one. And now we're looking at another medication that's going to help keep your muscle mass. So that's five medications. Touching. Right? They got gotcha. you. Yeah. Well, another route then that might be tempting, and I, I know that for men, we're bombarded with TV advertisements. Mm -hmm. Do you have low T? Yeah. Well, maybe instead of taking one of those medications to help lose weight, maybe if I beef up my metabolism by taking testosterone or something like that. Tell me about hormones. So absolutely with low T, you can reverse low T, especially for men, is when you are gaining weight especially abdominal, is estrogen. So your estrogen levels are increasing because of the body fat. Estrogen is getting produced in the body fat. That's why we see older men with bam boobs and then the gut. So when you start eating right, when you start getting your protein, your fats, your carbohydrates, macro tracking, and adding lifting weights, you will naturally increase that testosterone. Absolutely. And I can tell you, well, throw my, I won't throw my husband over the bus. I'll use him as an example. Very low T was in the tank, in the tank. And when I was going through the perimenopause and menopausal symptoms, the program that I coach now, I was actually a client at the time. And I said, I'm going to do this thing. I know it's just another thing. It's just another thing. And I said, would you do it with me? He's like, yeah, I need to. He's like, he's like, I'm up and I just, I just need to do it too. He's done it with me now for four years. His testosterone went from in the toilet to normal. And it's all from losing the inflammation. Same with his blood pressure. It's all from losing inflammation and lifting weights and adding muscle. So it's very, 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 very important to put the brakes on of thinking that you have to take an outside medication to get where you want to, all you have to do, and I know it takes work and I know it's a little bit harder than putting a cream on or injecting is to really focus on your nutrition and fitness. Because I'll tell you, even if you are doing those things, because what they'll say in the ads is this works with diet and nutrition and fitness. That always says in conjunction with diet and diet and exercise. So why not skip the expensive medication and go for the nutrition, the fitness in the first place? I agree. Yeah. And people have to realize that once they 
start the hormones and their body stops making their own hormones, you really become dependent on that for life. Yeah. So it's hard to get off once you're on. So it does make sense. I saw a YouTube short. It was of a woman that was kind of celebrating losing nearly a hundred pounds in about a year and a half. Yeah. And was that you next to her? That was, I was another trainer. I was next to her. I was on the floor, but yeah, that's my client, Amanda. Yeah. And oh, she's wow. now lost more than that. Like she said in the video, her, the reason for her doing that was for her babies. I mean, she's now doing, her babies are, are teenagers and looking at college and her win was that her kids couldn't keep up with her at a college visit, that she was just trucking <laughs> along. She's like, old me would have never been able to do this, wouldn't have been able to walk, would have been like, okay, you guys just go on. I'll catch up with you later. She's like, nope, she's she's leading she's leading the pack. And yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. Wow. Is that one of your favorite testimonials? I'm sure you have more like it. And that's, that's one of my favorites. Um, she's still with me. She's still a client. And she's getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And she's probably one of my favorites because she reached out to me on Facebook. She had seen my journey. I'd put my journey out there because I knew me going through perimenopause and menopause and being a fitness instructor and a pharmacist, I think I had all the answers. And I was also a nutrition coach for other things, but I was always calories in, calories out. You'd think I would have been like, okay, I got all it. No, I didn't. So I'm like, what? I'm going to put myself out here on Facebook going through this journey because if I'm going through this as a midlife woman, as somebody who's a fitness instructor, there's other people. And she watched me for a long time, reached out to me. She's like, I don't think you can help me because I am over 150 pounds overweight. I can't move. I don't even, I, she's, like, she's like, I think this is the craziest thing in the world that I'm reaching out to you. But what do you think? And I'm like, absolutely. Why not? And she's like, I'm done living this way. I'm done. And it was her motivation and her jumping in. Could she do the third? We have 30 minute workouts every day. Could she do them all out? No, she did what she could do. She moved her body every day and she started using nutrition. And the thing is, is when they go on vacations, she's so funny. They have to have some place that, ha that she can cook. She tells them where they're going out to eat because she does all the research beforehand and knows which restaurants that she can find stuff to eat. She is a hundred percent all in because she's like, you don't understand this was life or death. Yeah. And I think that's probably why that's one of my favorites is because there was no excuses. There was no, oh, I'm too busy. She is a, also a healthcare professional. She is busy. She has kids. Her husband works in a different town. She had all the excuses of why she should not have been successful. And she was like, nope, there's no excuses. I'm putting me first. And because of that, she's been a better mom, a better wife. It's like, yeah, I could go on and on. It's one of those really good stories. Well, yeah, I, I love that she had a reason why. Also, this yeah. is why I want to do this. Okay, remember that. Hold on to that. Figure out what your why is. Why do you want to make a change? Why do you want to improve your life? Because if you have a reason, you're more likely to stay committed to making that change. So, well, and I'm going to tell anybody on that who's listening is that if your reason why is to fit in skinny jeans, that's not good enough. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not. And I right. see that with lots of my clients, the clients that come in with a strong why, the clients that come in and say, I want my life to be better. I want to be able to play with my grandkids. I want to be able to stay out of a nursing home, or I've seen my parents, what's happening with my parents right now. And I don't want that. Those are probably my best clients. My clients that come in and say, oh, I just want to lose weight. I just want to say how quick, and I'm like, mm -mm. Because that's not what, what I'm about. I'm about getting you healthy. I'm about getting you stronger. And so that you can look in the mirror at the person who's staring back at you from 20 years in 20 years and says, yeah, keep going. You're doing everything possible to keep me out of a nursing home, to be better, to live, to live longer. And I always say with energy and purpose. Wow. That's great. I love it. So do you take clients only in Louisville or how can someone? I am virtual. I do virtual training. So that means I have clients all over the world, all over the United States, Louisville, Texas, California. And I start a six-week group every, oh, it's about the end of the month. 
And how it works is that it's a six weeks new client experience. It's to start the basics, is to get you going on the foundation. And then after that, we have what's called VIP that you will continue. And that's where you live the program. That's where you start getting better and stronger and stronger. And I always say is that the day that you start with me is day one of your journey, of your nutrition journey, of your exercise journey. You don't start that journey with yourself or you don't stop that journey with yourself until your last breath here on earth. But what happens is, is that there are lots of programs out there that are thousands and thousands of dollars. The program I partnered with keeps it where somebody can do it. And I never want costs to be a reason why someone can't get healthy. And I think some of these programs that are thousands, thousands of dollars, it's, they're so unattainable for the average person. I'm about the person who wants to stay out of a nursing home, the person who wants to make themselves better. And so, yeah, so it's six weeks. And then after that, it's month to month. And hopefully that you are getting your inflammation down and any markers that might be for diabetes or disease or heart disease. And they can always reach me on my website, amykwilson.com to get more information. I just opened up a window, amykwilson.com. And I see nutrition coaching, health, nutrition, fitness coaching to get your real results. Get started now. I guess you click on that button. And yep. That's all yep. you need to know. Yeah, and um, I do. And the question I always get is, do I have male and, and female clients? Yes, I do. I coach both. So I always, because every once in a while I get it. And someone's like, are you sure you do men? I'm like, yes, I do men. The majority of my clients are female, but I do do men. Okay, great. And I clicked on the connect link on top and I see links to all of your social media, Facebook, Instagram, mm -hmm. LinkedIn. Uh, I think that one's TikTok and YouTube. I highly recommend yeah. everyone subscribe to the Instagram and YouTube channel. Great content. I've been on those. And, and I have a, I a weekly have, blog too. So if you if you like to read, I have a weekly blog. <laughs> the, and it's funny because a lot of people aren't blogging anymore. I did take a peek at yours yeah. and it's definitely current and it's great topics. This was the one that I, I'm looking at it right now. Cholesterol and eggs, debunking the myth. That's a great topic there. People should know about that. Everyone's afraid to eat eggs. I love eggs. You're not going to take yeah. them away from me. <laughs> <laughs> I know what I like, and I, I don't know if you're supposed to mix these two kinds of fats together, but you make like a soft boiled egg and you put it right in the avocado half where the pit used mm -hmm. to be. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, my avocado toast every day is an egg with well, with the avocado on the toast. Little yeah. herba mare, which is a delicious seasoned salt. Yum. Yeah. Good stuff. All right. I am going to make sure I have all the links to your, in case people didn't get the amykwilson.com, I'll make sure there's a link to that and all your social media channels below the video on YouTube, on the bottom of the blog page where you'll have the YouTube video and you might be listening to the podcast there. All the resources you need to connect to Amy K. Wilson. Amy, what do you wish I had asked? Is there anything that you want to share that you didn't have a chance to? I would say the one thing that I do get asked a lot is like, what's the secret sauce? What is, if you could put everything down and boil it down, what's the secret sauce? And I'm going to tell you right now, the secret sauce is you. It comes down to whether you want it, whether you don't. And if you're willing to change every single time it comes down to you. So when you think about, oh, I want this new thing, or I'm going to do this thing. And, 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 I'm going to believe all their promises. Uh-uh, no, because the secret sauce is you. The secret sauce is not that product. The secret sauce is you and what you do. That's beautiful. Amy, thank you so much for joining me today and providing all this wonderful information for my following. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Haley.